This episode of Hands on Windows is presented free. If you'd like the rest of the episodes filled with great Windows tips and tricks, join Club Twit for $7 a month, or you can get just this podcast for $2.99 a month. Head on over to twit.tv slash club twit for more information. On the next Hands on Windows, I'm going to take a look at the onerous hardware requirements that Microsoft has for Windows 11, and I'm going to tell you how you can bypass it. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, welcome back to Hands on Windows. I am Paul Throck, and today we're going to stop. We're going to talk about installing Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. Of course, first we have to talk about what what exactly is unsupported hardware. So Windows 11 has hardware requirements, just like every other version of Windows. But for the first time in a long time, Microsoft has actually upped the requirements. Some of those requirements are reasonable. So, for example, for the on the CPU with Windows 10. Microsoft specified a 32-bit or 64-bit microprocessor running at 1 gigahertz or faster uh, clock speed. Windows 11 only supports 64-bit processors, so the 32-bit uh, is gone. And now they're saying dual-core or better microprocessors. That's completely fine. It's impossible to find a single-core processor these days, so that's fine. The issue with the CPU, however, is that they're a little more specific. So I'll just look at Intel because that's the easiest one, but what they basically have said is you need an eighth generation Intel Core or newer processor, or it's AMD or Qualcomm equivalent. That's a little interesting. It basically means that if you have a processor that was made before 2018, you're probably not going to be able to install Windows 11, or at least Microsoft won't let you by default. Uh, there's a TPM requirement, uh, Trusted Platform Module, the security chipsets common in PCs these days. Uh, Windows 10 could use a TPM 1.2 or newer chipset, Windows 11 requires a TPM 2.0 chipset. That one to date has been a little bit of a problem. A lot of people have gaming PCs, for example, turn off TPM because they uh, believe that it improves the performance of the PC. Um, TPM is also kind of a complex thing for mainstream users to understand and find in their BIOS and uh, enable if necessary. But I would say most computers, modern computers, have a TPM that would probably work fine with Windows 11. Uh, and then this RAM and storage. And this is where Microsoft has always kind of lowball things. Windows 10 was one gig of RAM, 32 gigs or more of storage for 32-bit, and then two gigs of RAM uh, for a 64-bit system. Those are ridiculous <laughs> numbers. Um, Windows 11 has been bumped up to four gigabytes of RAM, also ridiculous. I strongly recommend anyone getting a computer today uh, look at 16 gigs of RAM or more, frankly. But those are the requirements. And then on the storage end, uh, Microsoft has raised that from 32 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes. Again. The more the better for my use, I would say 256, 512, even or more. Uh, these days, it's common to buy a new computer and get a terabyte or even two ter terabytes of storage. So when we look back on that list, the unreasonable bits in some cases are going to be CPU because there are lots of people out there with 6th gen or 7th gen Intel Core-based PCs, TPM 1.2. It should work fine with Windows 11. Windows 11 and Windows 10 are basically the same you know, operating system. Um, it's a little confusing why those wouldn't work. If you have a computer that has, you know, two gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage, please upgrade. <laughs> so you do not try to install Windows 11 on such a computer. Now, as I noted, you can you can bypass this. The issue is if you bypass it, that computer is unsupported. Now, for a technical user, that's probably not an issue. Most people aren't calling Microsoft on the phone to get support. Uh, but Microsoft has said that they could stop delivering updates, including security updates. I think that's a hollow threat, but it's something to keep in mind. Um, they've also claimed that there could be security issues. And what wasn't true when Windows 11 first shipped a year ago, that could become true over time. Microsoft is pouring more and more resources into improving the security of Windows 11. And a lot of that work is not going to be backported um, to Windows 10, and it's not going to be backported to computers with older chipsets where hardware-based security is a requirement. There's also the possibility that Microsoft will annoy you with a desktop watermark. I haven't actually seen that yet. I've been looking for that. Um, you can Google that if it happens to you, but I would say that there are ways to turn that off as well. But for the most part, this isn't a huge deal for most people. If you have a, a computer that runs Windows 10 acceptably well, reasonably modern hardware, like I said, 6th gen Intel or newer or equivalent, um, the right amount of RAM, the right amount of storage, et cetera. TPM 1.2 or 2.0, uh, 
Uh, there's no reason you can't run Windows 11 successfully. And if everything goes bad, if Microsoft does follow through on their threats, you can always go back and reinstall Windows 10. Um, it's, it's not a hard thing to do. So the trick here is that you have to first find out that your computer's uh, it does not meet the requirements. You can do this with the uh, PC Health Check app, which you can download from Microsoft. And, uh, or you can just discover that if you run setup, you'll see this screen here. It will, in this case, it says the processor isn't supported for this version of Windows. This particular shot was taken on a PC with a sixth gen uh, Intel Core chipset. So the way you fix that is you open the registry editor and you navigate to H key local machine, system, setup, and then most setup, which you can see here, I assume most setup means more setup. That's excellent. Um, <laughs> right click that and then choose new D word 32 bit value. And now you get your new value inside of that area. And then you're going to rename that to, and this is a big word, but you can see it on screen, is allow upgrades with unsupported TPM or CPU, all, all caps on the beginning of each, of each word. Once that's renamed, you're going to open that up. The default value is zero. You're going to change that to one, and then you're going to reboot. Now, when you run Windows Setup after this change to your PC, it will actually proceed normally. Right at the end of that first interactive part, before you reboot the computer, you're going to see this screen here, and it's just going to say what needs your attention. It's just going to remind you this PC doesn't meet the minimum requirements. They explain why that's important. You know, they give you a couple of threats, and then you can accept this. And once you do, you can move forward. So this bit is interesting to me because this tells us that Microsoft does actually officially support doing this. I use support with kind of a lowercase s there. It will not support the system, technically speaking. I would say legally speaking. So it's possible in the future, like I said, that Microsoft might send this computer from getting updates. You might have security issues. Um, I don't expect them to actually stop delivering updates, especially security updates. But again, it's just something you have to kind of acknowledge uh, and then you can move on. But this is it. This is the end of it. So really one registry change, a reboot, Microsoft will allow you to install Windows 11 on supported hardware. It's not that hard. And that's all I've got for this one. This is nice and short <laughs> to the point. Uh, thank you for watching and thank you for supporting the show. Uh, we drop new episodes every Thursday. You can find them at twit.tv slash OW. Thank you for watching and we'll be back next week. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt and I'm the host of Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone. You got yourself a fancy camera but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show, I got you covered. Wanna know more about just the ISO and exposure triangle in general? Yeah, I got you covered. Or if you got all of that down, you wanna get into lighting, you know, making things look better by changing the lights around. I got you covered on that too. So check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today. Thank you.